Hello and welcome to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and this is the show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. Today we're finally looking at another Quake map. <laughs> There's been a lot of Half-Life on this channel the last few weeks, mainly due to so many releases, but got to catch up on some Quake stuff now in between uh, Planet Philip competitions. So this is Mainframe Mayhem by MFX. This was released a week or two ago and the initial release had a couple of problems with it, uh, technical issues with uh, visibility. In a couple of areas you'd get a lot of grey flash where visibility had gone wrong somehow. Something to do with uh, the compiler he used and the hint brush system in Quake for that compiler which is not quite right. It's all been cleared up now. So this is the final version of the map. Also I had a few gameplay tweaks from the original. Uh, had a couple of issues with gameplay in the original, there was a lot of teleporting in of enemies right behind the player which felt a bit cheap. That's been toned back a little bit now and it feels much much better as a result. So let's go and have a look. So I should probably mention that this map requires the Quoth mod which you can find over at quaddicted.com. I'll stick a link in the description below the video as always. So there are a couple of visual things to note in this first area here. You've got this dual layered lava here which is a really nice simple effect you can do where you just stretch the texture scale on the lava and then raise it up above another also textured with lava. I think it's a really nice effect. I haven't really seen it used much at all in other maps actually. Really grabbed my attention here. Uh, the other thing to note was uh, the map model was used in this. It's really really nice. I haven't really seen many map models used in Quake. It's kind of very very you see anything like that. But there's loads of them in this map and they're all used really really well. So there's a couple of hazard signs that you can see. Like things like hazard tape, there's even some broken sections that kind of flap around in the wind a little bit which looks amazing. The main trouble with map balls in Quake is that they're drawn a, a single sample for lighting so depending on the lighting directly below the model uh, that denotes how bright the model is going to be itself so there's no vertex lighting or you know kind of map lighting taken into consideration really, so it can stand out. But it's actually done very very well here, you don't really notice any like bright glowing models or anything like that. And there's some great examples of map models later on which we can talk about. So this map is incredibly impressive architecture wise. It's huge, it's incredibly detailed, it's got some lovely interiors as well, and it's got some very very subtle coloured light as well. You notice the blue on these lights here. It's not overwhelming, it's just kind of very very subtle and blends into the environment really nicely. So this area, in the original version of the map, you had all these dogs spawning directly behind the player and it was really really irritating. It happened like four or five times as you're walking through this area. Uh, in this version it's been toned down a lot. There's like two dogs that appear somewhat behind you at the end of it and the rest of them are just kind of hidden behind crates. It was incredibly frustrating in the first version of the map, but yeah, much better now. I, I really, really dislike backspawning, uh, which I've talked about a lot, I think, in videos, but the general premise is that it's just really, really crappy because the player basically has no warning and you suddenly teleport dangerous things in behind them without warning. It just feels incredibly cheap. There are ways to do it, uh, things like audio warnings or, you know, various visual warnings. Or even if you just teleport them behind the player a fair distance away so you know you hear the aggro sound you have time to react before they start hitting you. But yeah, uh, MFX did it very very poorly I think in the first version of this map. Just got to deal with some of the quoth additions to the uh, base bestiary. Most of which I enjoy fighting actually. There's a couple of what seem like redundant enemies. Like these things like floating sentries with weird tentacles beneath them. That just seem utterly redundant considering you've got the, uh, the floating security bots like we just killed there. So yeah, I don't know. The other thing that's interesting about this map is that there's a lot of uh, quote-unquote real-world elements to it. So things like um, lifts that you can activate with crates on. There's all things like uh, ladders with actual rungs and things like that. You don't really see a lot of this in Quake, it's generally a lot more abstract in the level design. But, uh, MFX does a great job of integrating these kind of real world elements into this kind of crazy uh, dimension. Again here you can just see the 
the uh, architecture is fantastic. This level reminds me a lot of the uh, Grenier Arid Settlements in Warframe. If you've played that game, I definitely recommend it. I'm coming up on 400 hours played, it's getting quite crazy. But anyway, I digress. So you've got a lot of these doors here which open up shortcuts to uh, previous parts of the level. These are used a lot. Uh, there's also a couple of secrets that involve opening these little doors as well. One one slight issue here is that sometimes these doors can just look like part of a wall. I don't think they're really denoted well enough in the environment. With enough repetition you kind of learn to spot them. But uh, the first time through the map I had no idea there were doors at all. I was just kind of walking around and uh, suddenly the wall opened. <laughs> <laughs> I think it just needs something uh, something else, like perhaps something on the texture, like an arrow or... I don't know, just something. That area was just jonesing for a secret. Unfortunately, there's nothing there. <laughs> but this is the silver key room. I love this room. It's got a great ambience to it. I love the lighting in here. Again, it's kind of this very, very subtle blue lighting coming off the lights here. With the slight fog as well, it really, really helps complete the effect. Of course, it brings us out right by the silver key door. This is a definitely a recurring theme. Whenever you pick up a key, you kind of exit directly into where that key door is. And you've usually gone past this area a couple of times before you actually grab a key. So the layout is extremely well thought out interconnects very very nicely some of the connections really don't make sense though there's a <laughs> there's actually a secret later on in the map that which connects to an earlier area for absolutely no reason at all it even tells you so by an, an on-screen prompt like pointless connection I forget what it says but yeah it's kind of funny so these are these little sentry things I have no idea what their purpose is. They're basically exactly the same as the floating uh, security bots. They just don't seem to move as much. And now we can grab the secret on this lift. This lift is really weird. There's a couple of lifts in this mod which just haven't really been thought out too well. So you have to jump that down here and then you have to jump inside the lift area to press the button and then get out before it crushes you. Uh, the button should really be on the outside of the lift here, it's, uh, it's a little bit odd. I suppose it's just a minor niggle, but uh, yeah, it's just strange. I think I had the same kind of issue in a couple of other MFX maps as well. Here's another kind of real world element that's integrated really nicely. So the crate slowly moves forward, letting you progress through this area. And as you do so, enemies kind of pop out of the woodwork at you. And now we have the obligatory crate puzzle. <laughs> because crates, you know, just got to. So there's the secret here. That grenade launcher comes in very, very handy. Grabbing it early is fantastic. And just another quick hop, skip and jump over here. really watch out for those plasma enforcers, they're very very nasty. Now this area is kind of, I suppose it's like a main hub for a lot of the map. There's a lot of connections that lead back into this atrium here. Uh, I really really like again the real world details, you've got all these crates hung up here. Generally you don't really see all detail like this in Quake maps. It's really really nice to see, this whole map is just an, an architectural marvel really, it's really really nice. Feels almost half life in a way. You've got lots of like control rooms with glass looking out into other areas. It's a great way to kind of signal the player what's coming up next and give them goals like, I want to go there. It's used really nicely in a couple of secrets as well, where you can actually see through see secrets through glass. Uh, in some cases, from lots of different areas. There's a lot of secrets kind of hidden in plain sight. You have to kind of work out 
how to get there. So there's the gold key door. Let's come back there later on once you grab it. Gold key room itself is probably what the weakest part of the level. I actually got lost quite badly in that area. Well, we'll talk about that when we get there. Because right now, secrets! So you can... In the area just above me, you could look through the wall and see a red armor. And opening this secret door here will get you to it. And again, this is one of those secrets you can see from two different angles. So you can see it through the pipes there, or through the glass when you come up the lift on the opposite side. Now this, uh, this lift here going down is fairly well hidden and it's kind of critical to progress. It took me a while to find it the first time through. It's kind of hidden away in a little cubby hole. I think it probably could have, should have been a little bit more prominent. Now I think the falling debris there signifies the opening of an area above you. And you're kind of told here, find a way into the gold key room. And uh, the rubble coming down from above actually opens up a kind of hole in the area above you that leads into the gold key room, but it's just not signposted at all. It's a real, real leap of uh, logic to kind of assume that players will understand that some debris falling down here means there's a new route open upstairs. We've had debris falling earlier in the map and it hasn't really done anything. I think if it had been introduced earlier as a mechanic, so when debris falls the player knows that something has exploded and opened up a route, I think it would have worked much better. As it stands, it's just not foreshadowed at all. So here's the hole that's opened. Which leads into the gold key room. Now we can go back to the gold key door, which amazingly is at the top of this lift. Again, the, the layout just interconnects really, really nicely here. Now here's another example of a mechanic which really should have been signposted earlier in the map so the players understand it. So you have a, a strong enemy teleports in and uh, hitting this button on the wall here with the red arrow lowers a crate down on top of it which presumably will kill it. Now unfortunately you press the button after you've killed the monster. <laughs> the player's first reaction upon seeing a monster in Quake is to shoot it. It's just ingrained into every Quake player that's ever going to play this map I think. Uh, the button is presented as being important, but players just aren't going to realise that it's it's a trap for your benefit. Again, I think uh, showing a button like that in a non-combat room before this would have worked really, really well. To kind of teach players, these buttons with arrows right next to them mean it's a trap in your favour, and you should probably push them while there's enemies around. Kind of get that instilled into the player's mindset but just introducing a mechanic on the fly like that, especially when in combat, just isn't going to work. It's a nice idea but it just needs better Im implementation I think. Here's that lift we looked through from the Red Armor Secret earlier. And again we've just opened another door back to this hub area here. Now we have a red key. Again, I, I love the use of glass. It's really, really simple. And again, it's kind of taken for granted in modern games, I guess, but it's just a great way to show areas that you don't want the player to get to yet. Things like fences in Half-Life serve the same purpose, and of course, glass as well. More ridiculous attention to detail up here with this uh, little fence on the side. Yeah, usually this stuff kind of feels really, really out of place in Quake maps, but uh, I think with the addition of the map models and just the glorious architecture here as well, it actually works really nicely. Usually they stand out like a sore thumb. Look at these models on the wall here. Some really nice uh, map models here. These are the ones, these are my favourite. Because it's got smooth animation. He's, I guess he's just animated the vertexes in the model to get the smooth animation on the panels. That's how uh, 
I imagine that's done. Yeah, really, really nice. Just complete and total fluff. Doesn't need to be there, but looks fantastic and really helps give the map a professional quality, which I like a lot. Now we're back up above that first giant outdoor area we, we were in with the dogs. We're kind of above that whole area now. There's lots of doors around here that we can find and open. There's another nice secret here as well. You, you've kind of got this grate in the wall with holes in it that you can look through. It's very, very subtle. Uh, but if you notice it, it's kind of a, a little hint that there might be something behind there, a secret or whatnot. And there you go. I, I like that a lot. And then of course we've got the uh, secretception. <laughs> one of my favourite things. Uh, that button opens one of the uh, sliding doors that I was just talking about. And again we've got a, a shortcut back to the area just in case you fall down these uh, lifts now activate and you can use them to travel back to this area. Very much required just in case you do fall back down into that arena down there. Just trying to remember where that door was that opened, it's over here. And you can see the super nail gun from down there and it's always a case of I wonder how you get that. <laughs> Wants to kill. I like the fact that they weren't there when you looked in through the glass and then when you go in there there's just loads of uh, enemies. It's kind of fun. It's very very gamey but uh, you don't expect it and it's, it's just fun. It works. You can get you can get away with a lot more gamey kind of stuff in Quake than you can with more modern titles just because of the fact that everything's so abstract usually in the environment you can you can just kind of get away with so much more stuff that probably wouldn't work at all in a Half-Life map. Imagine looking into a control room and not seeing anything and then walking around the side in Half-Life and suddenly there's, you know, eight Combine soldiers in there. I think people wouldn't really accept that as good design. In Quake I think it works just fine. Getting pretty close to the end now. Now the ending of this map is very very unforgiving. I just about scraped through the first time, it was really really close. Uh, once you know what to expect it gets a lot easier because you can kind of position yourself. But yeah, the first time it was a bit of a, <laughs> a pant wetting moment. Uh, this is on hard skill, on normal it's much easier, you get a different, different types of enemies spawn in, it's much more forgiving. MFX may have even changed this arena slightly in this version of the map, I'm not quite sure. It certainly felt a lot easier on this this time, even on hard. So maybe he did tweak it a little bit. What actually happens is uh, you get a whole bunch of shamblers teleporting. Like, I think there's four of them. And they all come in from like different angles in the arena. This power up here is absolutely required. Uh, I think the main issue is just that there's not a lot of visibility blockers in this arena, so you kind of want to position yourself down here, where you kind of got the most cover from the shamblers. You kind of block line of sight from at least one of them. That seems to work the best. But yeah, the first time I wasn't expecting at all a kind of eight, four lightning bolts all at once before I really found a decent place to uh, engage them from. <laughs> Then we have this awesome exit. So yeah, fantastic visual quality all the way through. And uh, in this fixed version the gameplay is much improved as well. There's just a couple of things where uh, some more foreshadowing of mechanics would have really really helped here to make it more fun to play. Alright, 
Now, the Fenceville's just finished and there's apparently 10 maps in it, so I'm probably going to make videos of all of them. So, it's going to be more Half-Life for the foreseeable future, and we'll come back and do some Quake stuff after that. So I'll see you next time.